and hello there everybody. What you can see currently on the desk is me having too many ideas. Yeah, let's get let's get on to it. So remember when we last time did the little RGB LED inside of the little Arduino? I'll just to have up here. I just disassembled everything now because I've been tinkering about with a lot of stuff. And I came across somebody called Mohit Boite, and I will already say sorry if I butchered that name. I sadly have still got no clue how it's pronounced. But he's done something called flywire or floating wire or artistic wire designs for electronics. It has a lot of names, nobody really decided what it's called, but generally it's called flywire. And why? Because he's basically elevating electronics on brass wire, which I have purchased a 50 meter coil of it right here. And you can see I've used a lot of it already and I've cut it all and straightened it all. And I followed his tutorial on how to straighten it with a drill. So you can just drill it up and when it's drilled it kind of straightens. But... Well, as you can see, it doesn't stay straight forever. Once you start working with it, it just bends naturally because I mean, you're holding it in your hands and weight applies and everything just bends over. I've, I've done a couple of tests with that stuff and I've gone through a couple of iterations just like tinkering around with it before I actually do anything on video. Uh, before, I was just planning to do my PCB for the little, uh, what's it called, rumor project. And I'm still planning on doing it, but in the meanwhile, I just want to do something fun, especially while the entire Corona stuff is going on. So I might as well just play around with some things at home before I actually purchase anything or order anything from China, which is probably going to take a lot longer to get made. But... I just tried soldering some stuff on two little headers and the brass wire is really tough to solder with mainly because it heats up the brass instead of the actual joints so you end up just holding it even back here and you try and solder everything and it's just you can't hold it and it just really doesn't want to cling onto it either sort of really has a lot of problems holding onto it. I think I have to probably brush or sandpaper the surface so that it's roughed up enough. Um, but this is just one of those headers that come in these long strips. Um, and they're fine, they're like DuPontish headers, and they're really fine, but if you want to make like just a short one, you end up having these breaks and this one I've already like melted down with a flat tip like a precision knife tip for the soldering iron and it's really not a nice cut and it's really looking ugly and even then later on I tested it with a smaller piece and it's just not something I'd like to keep doing since it's a mess and it smells really bad because you're basically burning plastic. So what I instead got myself into is getting myself a DuPont set. And this set comes with a little crimp tool as well to crimp on little DuPont headers. And all you do is you have these little wire thingies, little heads. If I can just hold it up to the camera, and if the camera would focus to it, then that would be nice. Yeah, there we go. And it's really difficult to see because it's so shiny. But yeah, this basically holds a wire inside, and you just crimp it together. It's basically just jammed into the wire. It works quite fine. It's just a little bit iffy. And it takes some time, and once you're done... You just take one of these headers and they come in different sizes as well. 
um, to just stick those little ends in. Maybe if the camera wants to focus like this, yeah. So you just stick them in into the broad side and they click with these little flops or flaps. And I can just show you some of the done ones. I've already tried to record how this is done. But you can imagine with me trying to fiddle around with the crimp tool right here and trying to show everything and the camera not focusing properly it was a pain and I decided to not use that footage because it's just a mess. But here I've done a single one and it's really just the metal part is on the brass wire and then you just like, like the plastic black bit is like a sleeve that goes over it and protects the wire and the metal. And I've done that for these motor controllers already. So right here I've like put several of these wires into the deposits and into a header. And I've gotta say I'm not like super happy about the fit there. I'm really not tight as you can tell by them being super like rotational. Like they're really not tight. You may have to do them again in the future. But the nice thing is that I can, when I'm finished with all of this, just have the wires connected everywhere and not actually solder anything to the motor controller. I can just slot in the motor controller into these things and never do anything to the motor controller itself, which is cool. Um, bending is as easy as just using like a wire tool really. Uh, let's grab this part. Like, it's as easy as just laying it out on the table, looking at how big you want things to be. And pick like this spot here, I'm just doing something random. And then all you do is rotate it and try and keep it accurate and the soldering came off. You just try and bend it around and then you've got a nice angle. Obviously this is just while the camera's in front of me, I can't actually see what I'm doing. But yeah, that's basically all you can do with it. I did some tests on the LED one over here, trying to bend them in a nice way. Again, this didn't really work out too well. I used some cheap solder I got off of Amazon with a new soldering iron. Um. But what we wanted to do, or what I wanted to do, was show you something through Fusion 360 to 3D print something. And what I ended up doing was I wanted to show you it. I'm still going to show you it on the PC in just a minute, uh, how the design worked. But I wanted to actually like design it with you. But little did I know was that this took like three or four attempts to get the size right and to get the model to look like proper enough. So I decided to just fix it up on my own and 3D print a couple of them as prototypes. Perhaps not final yet, but I just, as a point to make, like you can see here, it's not straight. This is a mess. If I was to just hook this up, it would probably short circuit within like seconds. It would just heat up and go boom. But I decided to design a little clip, and if I can just get them off, a little clip with holes. And if I zoom in, there we go. You can see that this is, let's actually see if I can do this properly. So this is just two halves, two little plastic halves. Come on camera. You can do it. I, I believe in you, camera. There we go. It's just two halves screwed together tightly. I'm going to probably use smaller screws in future with eight holes. And eight holes mainly because these can hold up to eight, but I'm just using, using seven for this. Because if you can see here, two on the bottom are ground while I ha already have a ground pin, so I'm not using the two on bottom ground pins. And it's really just sewed together and it has some distance between it so that these wires don't connect. It makes it easier later on for me since I can just shove them like right up to there 
cut them straight to length and solder them to wherever I want them to go. And that way they're not touching each other. And I've done a small one and this is I think the bigger one now, which is a lot more what I wanted to have. They're not perfect yet. I want to make them in different sizes as well because these are just for the motor controllers and we've got the receiver here for the controller itself for the remote control and you can see we've got a 6 one here and right next to it we have a 2 one here because that's just plus and minus and again this is as simple as having these plugged on maybe I can actually distance it to disattach it yeah or detach it um, yeah, it's just two wires stuck in here, and it's really just a DuPont connector. And honestly, I wouldn't want to fiddle around with soldering these brass wires onto the controllers. Because like I said, soldering anything with these brass wires is a pain. They just heat up, the entire heat just dissipates into them, and the solder just doesn't want to work. So this is my plan for at least keeping them straight and out of each other's way. It's not perfect yet. It can definitely need some work, touch-ups. This is about as good as I can get it so far. I'm probably going to make a couple of improvements, but the main idea will probably be to make a shape to fit all the wires eventually into each of these holes in like a boxy shape and have everything laid out. And I'm thinking, like if you can follow, I'm probably thinking of having these sat something like that. Obviously the wires are in the way. So let's untouch these. So having the motor controllers sat something like that. While the receiver itself can then easily sit over here at the back because there's the most pins for the receiver over there. I'm gonna think of a way to attach the little lipo connector as well because it has thicker pins over here and those are also pinned because they are also just brass and they heat up the entire thing here and they've been a pain to solder onto PCBs because they just dissipate the heat like the brass wire and I'm also going, going to use this little switch but that's going to be as easy as I can probably imagine as well as the LED. The LED is done already. I can probably touch it up. But the LED is about as good as I can get it. And remember the LED is just to show or signify that we have enough power in there. And why are these wires here? These are basically in case I need to build a frame or any sort of shape to hold them together and give the entire thing some structure. I can still always use them to like solder of two parts together or make angles or make a small frame or outlay for everything and like connect grounds and plus uh, plus railroads as, as I see fit because there's a lot of these things need 5 volts so connecting everything to one pin wire just these things would be fairly easy but yeah we're going to head over to CAD and look at the design we've got Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show the website of Moet Void and I'm probably going to send some links in the video description below to his Twitter and to his blog or website and to his YouTube channel because he's got a lot of very informational stuff on it and he shows a lot of good work on it and if you click over here to sculptures um, we have or he has, I should rather say, a lot of designs on it, a lot of cool things on it, and it's really worth checking him out because he does things like, like a little, um, what's it called, sound meter, and you can already see the amount of work he put into it, and it's it's probably going to take some loading time. It's bound to happen because internet's always good. But yeah, you can see how well all the job he does, just bending these and doing all the electronics. It's pretty genius. And he's got a lot of designs, and he's obviously got a lot of YouTube videos on it as well. And I hope 
that at the end of this project I might have something even just mildly looking like it and you can also see right here if it loads that he's actually using a little base down here to I presume this is just for the ground like this is all just a ground base um, but yeah, I'm gonna link this site over to the YouTube comments and or YouTube description and we're just going to quickly head into Autodesk Fusion and don't be surprised that the screen is cut off up there that's really just because there's private information above and I'm not going to post that into the internet so when I first did the design for those little wire holders this was the first design I had and it was bad it was super small and it was just unbearably small like this was the sketch I just had the inner diameter which is like about a millimeter is the wire thickness of uh, wire diameter this is about a millimeter I think it's 0 0.8 ish there's obviously always some variation especially with the bends of the wires and I just gave it all like that two millimeter rim for material and a little slope and it did not print well this was too small for the printer to print mainly because especially when you're working with like a 3d printer you have to take in take in mind or take in consideration that your printer has certain specs and you need to just work around them so what i completely missed right here was that this was just two millimeters like this big circle was just two millimeters and this is going to take a lot like of precision that you're asking for when you're working with a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle which is fine it can oops, that's wonky uh, 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle can work up like if you're printing upwards you can set it to 0 0.05 millimeters per layer which I can show in Cura in a second but you still have to respect that the thickness of it has to be 0 point or will most likely be 0 0.4 so if I just get a small little box over here and I'm not going to save this and this program is being wonky come on there we go and if I just do like not 0 minus 4 0 0.4 so you can see that this this alone is 0 0.4 millimeters, right? Yeah, this is 0 0.4 millimeters, and this is as thick as each layer will be. And now imagine this along here. It's not going to work. Like, this will is less than two rounds around. It's just too little material for it to actually properly print, and that was a big problem. It just gave me a little blob and it did nothing it just gave up and so we went on to a new design which is just one half don't be surprised it's just one half of two so this when i said that there's like two things come together when the wires being held in between this is basically what we came to was just as very still very small but it's a lot bigger than it was before these holes are a little more than one millimeter I think to or th these holes are a little more than one millimeter to just help with the bends that are on the wires the material here is like three millimeter thick uh, these holes here are for M3 bolts and nuts because I just like M3 screws. They hold together everything I do usually and I have a ton of them around. You could easily make them smaller. That's not a problem. Um, I did add a few champers around just to make it look smoother. But yeah, that's the basic gist. And here's the sketch as well. You can see I just made a square, gave it a lot of little boxes and Okay, so the mil it's one millimeter within these specs, like within the little holes where the pliers can go through. And I'm always leaving 1.5 millimeters between each so that they're spaced out. And these say three millimeter, 
well, they're supposed to be like 2.8, I think, is what the heck is what the screws actually are but they need to be three millimeters simply because again if you're working with 0.4 millimeter nozzle the wall whip will just make sure that this is all smaller anyway like they're just a very tight fit even with those added like 0.2 millimeters and I think in the end all I did was yeah I have one extrude yeah, one extrude just goes from the bottom up and then the second one just is I think if it if it shows me here I can actually see of course fusion doesn't like being recorded there we go so yeah you can see that the first one was just from the bottom up and this is just the top and I put this at 0 0.5 millimeters because remember the wire is like about one millimeter uh, in diameter. So if we have two of them clamped like opposite of, of each other, so then we'd actually have like one millimeter instead of 0 0.5. So that's why I did this. So it's basically just a half, and I can easily fit them. Like they fit just snug and perfectly together. And since they're symmetrical, it doesn't even matter if I turn them around or anything. They still fit. Yeah, that's the design we went for, and in Cura, this actually looks very curious. Get it? Cura? Cura? Mm, and I'm stopped. So, of course, Cura has different controls, which is irritating. But uh, it's a little bit difficult to see sometimes, but here it is. It's super small and super tiny, but it works. It fits on the plate, and we just use a layer hat of 0 0.05, and the line width, the width of the filament that is going to be extruded like on the side, will still be 0 0.4 and I, I can change it obviously in software but it won't do anything for the actual printer the printer will still just jam through the filament if you don't make this properly the filament will just like ooze out in strings and not do anything so when this is actually sliced like this we can see let's see how long is it going to take to slice We can see in the preview just how it's built up. So we have a little um, raft around it so that it sticks to the surface. And you can just about tell how many layers are within these 0 0.5 millimeters. There's like 50 ish layers. Yeah, you can see that each layer just builds up and up and up and up and up and puts them all together. And it's, it's a really smooth print as well. I was very surprised about how smoothly it all worked and it only takes like 24 minutes and it's like one gram of filament as well it's really not pricey to make I could probably like make it hundreds of them with ease if I really needed to but yeah I need to design these with six like just shrink it down a bit and make it for six and make one for two probably like a very small one and I don't know maybe I'll just make like a whole variety of them and if you guys are interested in the Fusion 360 files uh, or the STL files do let me know I'll see if I can actually upload them somewhere like um, Thingiverse or something just to do this properly so that you guys can download them yourselves and 3D print them because it's really not that difficult to make but I know that not everybody has access to the Fusion 360 even though it's free for the most part um, but yeah this is all the 3D like side of it and yeah I'm just going to sit down and design these probably gonna work on how I wanna bend out the wires and I'll probably give you an update like in a few days of the project progress because I really want to like, get to work with it and I don't know if I can actually work on it while I'm sitting behind the camera because it takes time and it's really fiddly and the camera focus point probably probably won't pick it up properly so yeah this is just going to be a solo project for right now I'm just going to keep you up to date every now and then I've also got some plans, by the way, for for some soldering to come up. I do want to have a few little projects going on 
especially now that we've got a lot of time thanks to the entire outbreak so yeah expect a lot more content to come up very soon but for right now thank you guys for watching and have a good day bye bye